Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Will you stand, please? Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and in one of another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us comfortable ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. We are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service that we may rejoin to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the lessons. Good morning. <clears throat> Near the end of Jerusalem's exile in Babylon, God promises to bring the people home. 
They need no longer be afraid because the one who formed, created, and called them by name now redeems them from all their enemies. That God declares them precious and honored, and God loves them. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, I save you. I give you Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The psalm is Psalm 29, and we will read that responsively. <clears throat> ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord burst forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. O oh Lord, give strength to your people. Peter and John are sent to support the new Christians in Samaria, a group that was recently baptized after hearing the good news of Christ through the preaching of Philip. Here the Samaritans received the gift of the Holy Spirit in the laying on of hands. The second reading is from Acts chapter 8 verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But to chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, 
the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This is our traditional epiphany, the, the revealing of Christ's speech. The first time when God actually speaks out and says, you are my son. But it's interesting to notice that just before that, the people that had come out to see John were wondering, maybe he's the Messiah. Let's face it. This man comes out into the wilderness, makes a camp next to the Jordan River. And as people go by, he speaks to them and the word starts to spread. And all the peoples in the town, especially Jerusalem, start to talk and to think. Here's a man talking about a God that says that the little guy, the guy that is used by the rich and powerful to help build the temple and build the buildings and the roads, the disposable people. They're important to this God. This man says this God loves them. And all the women and the children who are usually disregarded as not important, God loves them. He wants them. And even the Roman soldiers who are universally hated by everybody is loved by this God. And some just, so they come to see this John and they come and say, Wow, I like the God you talk about. You must be our Messiah, right? I mean, let's face it. He looks like the kind of person you'd want a Messiah to be. I, I always see John, okay, how many of you has actually seen one of the Harry Potter movies? Okay, sure, me too. And my daughter was a Harry Potter junkie. And you know the groundskeeper, that huge guy with the beard and the furry coat? In my mind, forever and ever, that's going to be John the Baptist. So imagine this huge guy with this powerful, commanding voice, promising people God's love. Yeah, that sounds like my kind of Messiah. He's going to lead us right into Jerusalem. And then the Pharisees and Sadducees come out to see what's going on here. And instead of being frightened, John stands up to him and runs him off. Yeah, that's the way I want to see a Messiah. And John says, no, I'm sorry, but I'm not, that's not my job. I'm the messenger. I tell you about the coming Messiah. That guy over there, he's the Messiah. And they look, and here's Jesus. Skinny little rabbi, soft-spoken, Smiling, friendly, kind. He's the one that's going to run off the Romans? I don't know about that. He's the one that's going to purge the temple? <laughs> you sure you got this right, John? And then God finally steps into the act and gives his opinion. Only it's not an opinion at all. It's a statement. This is my son. I'm pleased with him. Listen to him. Okay. Final judgment. God says this is the Messiah. And the question was resolved. Mostly. Do you know that today there are still a few cults, oddly enough, in northern France and southern England that still are debating that maybe it was John who was the Messiah? But for the rest of us, I think that issue has been resolved. But that doesn't mean in our hearts and our actions that there are still issues in the church of mistaken identities. And I think those identities deal with the Messiah as well, but on a personal basis, not on a basis of looking at John anymore. If you look on television, especially with the televangelists, you begin to wonder if they think maybe they're the Messiah. Listen to me. I have spoken to God. I can lead you to God. No, 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 you got it wrong, Jack. 
You're supposed to lead them to Jesus, to tell them about the Jesus that will lead them to God. You're not the Messiah, you're the messenger. Same as me, same as all of you. We're the messenger. But that doesn't stop us, though, from looking at others and judging them and assigning them identities. Usually, it's by the way they look. There were some beautiful stories about that. Um, in a church that was in between pastors, one Sunday, a, a fellow wanders in, and he's not too well dressed, you know, blue jeans and a jacket. Could be a little cleaner, they thought. Nobody knew him. Everybody's looking over their shoulder going, you know, wondering about that fella. And after church, it was pretty much like here. We all get out into the narthex and form up into little groups. And as the guy walks out into the narthex, they're still going. And he walks through them and he's out the door. Well, the good news was that the next week or so, they had a call committee meeting. And they're going to interview a new pastor. And by now you've probably guessed who the new pastor is. <laughs> this time the guy is there in his clerical shirt, wearing a suit, well cleaned. And he says, you know, I might like working here. He says, there's a lot of work to be done, especially on greeting the stranger and showing friendship and love. Oops. Embarrassing. But that's how that works. We judge the person by how he looks instead of wondering what's in his heart. I've seen the opposite too. I talked to somebody once and he says, I don't really feel interested in coming to your church. And this was when I was back in Elmore. Why not? He says, it's full of hypocrites. Everybody dresses up fancy, sits in the front row, looks like a banker. But you ought to see them when they get down into town on Monday. Bunch of hypocrites. Why do I want to come there and sit with them? And it occurred to me, I said, well, isn't that what church is for? For the hypocrites. For the people to realize their sins. For the people to come and hear the word that they are all sinners. I said, and doesn't that also make you a hypocrite? Because you've come to judge these people and think you're better than them, and yet you don't even go to church. Think about that. Hmm. Again, judging by how they look, not my kind of people. I'll go someplace else. But finally, in the terms of how people look, I, I have a young man that I'm, been encouraging to uh, join the SAM program because I think he could do a great job. Uh, if he's watching this on the internet this week, he'll probably be embarrassed by this, but still, he's got a great faith, but he's got kind of longish hair and tattoos, and he used to be a cop, and he's part of a motorcycle group. And yet, you know, that biker group rides all over this, uh, this county and the state collecting funds and food for the poor and the needy, doing good things, and he's their chaplain. And I think this man could reach out, especially to a special kind of group, but I wonder if he would ever be accepted in a respectable church simply because of the way he looks not because of what's in his heart. You see, we tend to try to play the Messiah and judge people by what we see. And I wish sometimes that the heavens would open and God would say, he's not that bad. He's the same as all the rest of you. Love him. But I don't hear that happening. And so the problem goes on with our mistaken identity for these people. Sometimes also we try to judge people by the way they act. 
and the same problem occurs. In fact, I know of a banker that was, he was kind of like the hero of the town. When the kids were having little league baseball, he financed it. When the Girl Scouts sold cookies, they were in the lobby of his bank, and he always bought generously. When the one lady's husband died, and she was going to lose her house, he took her into her off his office and refinanced the thing so she could stay in her home. But he was well loved. He was their kind of guy. Except he bluntly told me, I don't expect me in your church. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I don't believe in a God. And it occurred to me, you can do good things, you can love your neighbor, but that doesn't mean you're a Christian. And yet, I'm sure everybody who looked at him thought of him as a great Christian fellow. We have to see, again, what's in the heart, not what's in the hand or the voice. I had a lady, too, that joined my Bible study, and she was from another church. And she was great. I mean, people liked her. The group got along well with her. The, she was always kind. She obviously knew her Bible. And finally one day, the one lady from my church said, you know, I don't know where you go to church, but, and actually she did know. She says, but in your heart, you're a Lutheran. Just by the way you act and the things you do. And to her, that was a wonderful compliment. That was like the ultimate Christian. But the lady took offense and said, why can't I be a good Christian in my own church? Well, I didn't say that you couldn't, but and that was the last time I saw her in that Bible study. Sometimes when we judge people, and use our terms to judge them, it doesn't come off as well as they'd like. We have to be careful. It's a difficult situation, this judging people. Maybe that's why God says, judge not. I will be the one who judges. Maybe that's why we hear in the creed that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, offered under Pontius Pilate, and he will come to judge the living and the dead, not us. The final one, though, the, 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 the funniest part of mistaken identities <laughs> is when we judge ourselves. I can't tell you how many people I've heard say, well, I'm not that bad a Christian. You know, okay, I, I, I'm not some Saint Francis or Mother Teresa, but I'm, I'm not a Hitler either. I'm just a good average Christian. And I thought, okay, Mother Teresa, Saint Francis, Hitler, where are you? Well, I don't, I don't know exactly, you know, but I'm, I'm probably over here closer than over there. And yet God says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God isn't a linear scale kind of judge. God's what we call a binary kind of judge. Sin, good. You sin. Doesn't matter if you lied to your mom about where the cookies went or if you robbed a bank. It goes into the sin category for we have all sinned. It's not how good you are or how good, how bad you're not. It's about faithfulness. And yet we have this mistaken identity of ourselves as being, oh, I'm a little closer to God than those people over there. And that's not how it works at all. There is a, a musician named Barry McGuire. Maybe some of you remember his song about the eve of destruction was because of his views of how war went. And he got back from it. And he turned into a great Christian musician. And I went to one of his concerts, and at the end of the concert, he started out by telling people, 
You know, as we're all gathered here singing together and praising God, I can't believe that we're sinful. He says, and I believe that in this place there's good being done, and therefore none of us are sinful. And when you go home tonight, I want you to continue to think of those hymns and the songs that we sung and the words of them, and to continue not to sin. And maybe you can carry that through the night and even into tomorrow. And it sounds like a promising idea. And we tend to judge ourselves that way. I, I, there's times when I know I'm not sinful. Except that's not how it works. Luther talks about us being all saints and sinner at the same time. Somewhere back there in your head, there's pride or there's envy, there's greed or there's, you know, desire. We're always sinful. And you can't turn it off. In fact, in the discussion with one fellow that says, I don't believe that I'm being sinful today. And I don't think I, and if I controlled it, I probably wouldn't be sinful tomorrow. And I ask him, so then what are you doing here and why do you need Jesus? Because Jesus' primary job is to save you from your sin. Well, I didn't say I was never sinful. But today and tomorrow you're telling me you don't need Jesus. And to me something about that sounds wrong. Once again, we choose to be the judge. We choose to be our own kind of Messiah. To be the one who says good, evil. And oddly enough, we usually come up on the side of good. <sighs> Leaves us to ask, in all of these mistaken identities where we judge others and judge ourselves and identify ourselves and others, what should we be doing? And the answer is simple. If we're all sinful beings and we are all the children of God, Look at that first lesson that you heard. Listen to a God that says, I created you in a beautiful form. I claim you and I will bring you back to me. And if God can love us that way, then listen to Jesus' words that says, and you shall love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Instead of judging we need to come to God and say, I love these people. Yeah, he's an alcoholic. She's a gossip. Back there, they are cheats and liars. And up here is a guy in a robe that's a hypocrite. But we're all children of God. And if God can love us, over all that sin, shouldn't we be doing the very same thing to each other? That's the message here. Instead of having mistaken identities for ourselves and others, let's use the identity that God gives us, child of God. Let's modify it to say, beloved child of God. Let's make it really cool by adding beloved, forgiven child of God and see each other in that light. In fact, this week, that's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to go out and look at someone that you know and ask yourself, what kind of a person is this? Is that a good person, a bad person? Are they as good a Christian as I or are not? And then throw all that away. And try to look at him again and say, how does God see this person? Beloved, forgiven, child of God. And spend some time trying to see that person and treat that person in that way. Beloved, forgiven, child of God. Think about it today. Who are you going to pick to look upon and say, you I love because God loves you too. Do that in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
we continue with the hymn. confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Spirit of the Lord is poured upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, you reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all, and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. God of grace. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need. Today, especially be with Bill Heber, Sr., Ross Welling, Chuck and Janet Selby, 
Melissa Briggs, Steve Roosh, with Loreth Rothenbuehler and Ed Rowe, with Jane Roosh, Lauren Lavoy, Elaine Baker, Ann Rayski, Kelly Knitz, and with Jessica and Julio and Alexa, and with Trish. God of grace, hear our prayer. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. God of grace, you created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those you have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace, since we have such great hopes in your promises, O oh God, we lift them in all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Will you stand as we continue with the offering? Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. We continue with our sending him.
Let us repeat together our mission statement. Connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community and the world. Then go in peace and serve the Lord. Be to God. Amen.